Hello everybody and welcome to the Low Hanging Reviews Fall Special. Now for those who do not call fall, fall, it's also called autumn in some places. And during those times, at least in America, some people like to celebrate a little holiday in November called Thanksgiving. Now I know that some people may have some reservations about celebrating Thanksgiving or even merely observing it. However, I'm not in the business of politics or, you know, debating what is ethical or not, you know, based on a holiday or tradition. I will say that I do, myself, celebrate Thanksgiving. The negative connotations associated with said holiday are not really part of my tradition. However, it's just more of a time to gather around friends and family and really be thankful and thoughtful towards those in your life and the things that you have. So in the spirit of November or fall or autumn or whatever you want to call it, I went ahead and decorated the set as so. As you can see, we have this really retro, ugly looking turkey pumpkin leaf combo, which I love, and the two fake pies, a little bit of wooden stuff here for some rustic vibes, the pumpkin, and of course, the three colors of the season. The one thing that I am going to address is that originally my plans were to dress the setup as so, and as you can see, that was done. I was also going to review Thanksgiving products. However, due to Thanksgiving really not being a huge holiday, not as big as Halloween and, and Christmas is, it kind of gets lost in the shuffle, meaning that there are like 10 days, maybe, at max where you can find Thanksgiving things between the two very popular holidays. So instead, I decided to give you the vibes by dressing up the set, and instead, I'm gonna review something else uh, a little bit different. It has nothing to do with Thanksgiving. However, it is the first time that we're gonna review something like this on this channel. That being the Game Station Pro from My Arcade. And this giant blue badge indicates that there are nearly 200 games on this console that being 191. We can also see that it comes with two controllers, the game console itself, and a motion control paddle. I also have to say that this box art is really, really nice. And I got it from Big Lots for $39.99, roughly $40, which I know is more than what we're used to paying on this channel, but I will explain that in just a second. So my logic is this. I've never seen a game console for this cheap with this many accessories and, you know, that many games. I have seen things on Wish.com or the Wish app that, you know, are similar but cost just a bit more plus the shipping and handling and you gotta wait, you know, who knows how long. So if you think about it, for $40, 200 games plus two controllers, the console itself and the wireless paddle, I'm pretty sure that's a good deal. However, there are ups and downs to these things. You pay $40 for this, for example, and it's not obviously going to be the same quality as, you know, like a Nintendo or anything like that. But for what they're charging, this may actually be a great value. We have yet to see. And before I go on, this may or may not be important, you know, to you. However, I am dealing with a slight issue um, with my hand. Uh, this left hand is severely underpowered right now. It's not really able to grip or grasp things. I can't hold things that are really heavy. You can see with this one, I have a lot of control, a lot of power. This one has no power right now. It's just a little nerve problem. I've been dealing with it on and off, nothing to be really worried about. And hopefully it doesn't affect the review. So as mentioned before, I think this box is really cool. What makes it even cooler than that is that if you lift this up, there is information about the console itself, some nice graphics and all that, plus you get to see these cutouts with the actual hardware inside. And here's more of a close up of what the inside top panel of the box looks like. There was a lot of effort, I must say, put into this packaging. And I'd also like to point out that this thing is also HD compatible. And on the back of the box, we see three pictures. The first picture being that of the console, the second of the two controllers, and the third of the paddle. Some quick information on it, 191 Belgian video games, wireless table tennis paddle for unique gameplay, powered by two, AAA batteries not included, as the track drives by again. Console plugs directly into your TV for easy setup and hours of family fun. And the console itself is also powered by batteries for AA batteries. I don't know about you, but I think it's about time to open this thing up and see what's inside. As you can see, all the hardware is there. We have the two controllers, we have the console, we have the paddle, and this dubious white box. Everything is self-contained in this little plastic thing. It has cutouts so you know exactly where to put it and it doesn't get damaged. In the box, I can only assume are cables, wires, connectors, adapters, things of that nature. Inside the box, we have 
one HD adapter and you got your colored cables here and the HDMI cord on the side. We also get one rather large uh, HDMI cable and that's pretty impressive. Also included is this handy HD connection guide showing you how to hook up the cables to the box right here and into the console. So I went ahead and took all this out of the plastic and underneath the console was this manual. So first up we're going to take a look at the console itself. Now at the top right here it looks like that it opens and it can receive discs. However, this doesn't open at all. The two buttons you have right here is the power button and the reset button. And power, you know, obviously turns it on. To reset the console, all you have to do is reset and it'll take you back to whatever the main menu was. And attached to the end of that is a simple yellow and white cord that go into the corresponding spots. On the bottom, this is where you put the batteries. This is the door and you do need a Phillips head screwdriver to unscrew that to pop that four batteries in there. And on the front of the console are the two ports that you plug the controllers in. They're just simple USB ports. Taking a look at the paddle, the first thing that I can see is this little dot right here, indicating probably an infrared sensor, which is something that's you know similar to what's on your remote control for your TV. By the way, there is one sensor on each side of the paddle, so if you do a front hand, back hand type of thing, it can read it. And on the handle, of course, there is a trap door for your batteries and another Phillips head screw. Moving on to the controllers themselves, we have a D-pad in four directions here. That doesn't feel too bad. A little loose, but not too bad. I will say it's easy to push down. They're not too sharp, so you won't be cutting your fingers. Here we have a select button, which actually is rubberized. This is actually hard plastic. Here is a start button, which is also rubberized. And four colorful hard plastic buttons, which actually are very satisfying to push down. On the top of the controller, we can see that the wire is plugged in. No shoulder buttons. I don't think you're gonna need them quite frankly. And down here we have another infrared sensor. It may be a little hard to tell, maybe not. Uh, this controller is smaller than most standard controllers, maybe by an inch and a half. It is comfortable to use, I will say. It doesn't feel too bad. And if you have bigger hands, maybe it might be a problem, but it doesn't feel too bad. I'm gonna go ahead and get this set up and we will see what kind of entertainment this will be able to provide. First things first, we take the yellow cord and the white cord and plug them into the corresponding colors into the box. Then we take one side of our HDMI cord and plug it into the HDMI slot. We then take our USB piece and plug it into the USB power slot on the box. And that's that for plugging in wires. However, on the side of the box, there is a little switch indicating either 720p or 1080p. And I think we're going to be sticking with that. Of course, the controller itself is USB. So all we have to do is take the end of this and plug it into the front of our console. And of course, once you've put the batteries into this thing, it's wireless, so you don't need to plug this into anything. You can just set this to the side. And I'm gonna do the same with the secondary controller since it's only going to be me today. So now that I have my monitor connected to my system, uh, you can see that it says no signal and it's just blue. That's normal, don't worry about it. One thing I will mention is that for this demonstration, there won't be any sound because this is actually a monitor with no speakers. It's not a television. And it'll also save me the trouble just in case there is any copyrighted music on this thing that I'm not aware of. So to start this thing, you just push the start button on the left hand side of the console, like so. Then you're greeted with this screen here that says Dream Gear. Now as far as I know, this screen stays up for like forever if you don't push anything. So what you're going to want to do is grab your controller and push the start button. Once you do that, you're greeted with a set of seven instructions, which kind of goes over briefly how to use this thing, what the indicators are. To get past it, push start once more. Once you get past that, you see that this is the main menu. It has games 1 through 16, and at the top it says 191 in 1 games. So this is exactly, you know, what we signed up for. So I'm not going to go over all, you know, 191 games. However, I will show you them in the menu section, and I will go over certain ones uh, as we go through them. So starting with page number one, we have games including Table Tennis, Tennis, Mars, Curly Monkey 2, Vanguard, Impossible Mission, King Kong, Skywing, Sky Dreamer, Champion Boat, Extreme Racing, Zooming, Jumping Wheeled, Poleaxe, Abscondi, and Slots. The first thing I'd like to point out is that I have not heard of a single one of these games ever in my life. However, that doesn't mean that we can't be pleasantly surprised with 
the options that we have here. So why don't we go ahead and take a look at the first one being table tennis. And in order to select the game, you guessed it, you push the start button once more. Wow, you know what? The animation on that is pretty good. I have to say, that's awesome. So here we are with the main menu for table tennis. And guess what? This is the first game where we get to use the paddle. So uh, I don't know about you, but I think I'm feeling like I'm ready for the championship. I don't think I need the practice. And um, as you can see, every country has different looking players, which is pretty cool. Um, yeah, they're probably just palette swaps of each other, but you know, I don't know what country I'm gonna pick. I'm just gonna pick one at random by mashing this uh, D-pad around and we're gonna be the Netherlands. Okay, so we push start on the controller and so here we are, table tennis, and I'm gonna use the paddle and let's see if it works. Oh, wow. You know what? That's actually pretty responsive. I don't know if you can see that, if I'm blocking it, but you know what? I'm hitting it right. Oh, I missed. But I was hitting it to the right and it seemed like it was going to the right. So here we go, here we go, one more, here we go, I feel like I'm gonna, oh, oh I got that one, let's see if I can actually score a point here, oh looks like I did. So essentially how this works is like a cheap version of the Nintendo Wii. As I stated before, there are two dots, one on each side of the paddle, and those are infrared sensors, and it doesn't matter if you hit it with the back of the paddle or the front of the paddle, it'll register except that time I just missed because I'm horrible at this game. What I will say is that it does seem to be very responsive though. Like I'm hitting it and it seems to be like at the exact time that I'm doing so. So much so that I just scored a point. I can see myself having a lot of fun with this. I'm starting to blow my arm out, but you know what? It's worth it. And I should mention that there is no way to get back to the main menu of games uh, with the controller. You're gonna have to push the reset button that's located on the right hand side of the system itself just like so, where we get back to the blue screen and eventually back to this screen where we can push start one more time and start again, and here we are. Okay, moving on in our adventures, it seems that table tennis was actually pretty cool, and if I had to venture a guess, I would say that tennis is exactly like table tennis, just on grass or on a court or something like that. It seems to be, we will go with uh, Germany because the guy has pretty cool hair. This, we have to hit the ball up. And I am doing horrible. Okay, so you have to hit it up and then hit it again while it's in the air. Oh, oh my goodness. So I guess apparently I just lost that one. So let's try this one once more. Hit it up and over the net. That's pretty cool. Seems to be working just fine. Just like a ping pong game, except on a grander stage. And uh, you know, you got the line guys, the judge. And um, you got to do that when you serve it. Okay, now let's move on to something a little bit different. I am getting a little bit tired of swinging this uh, paddle around. Let's try Curly Monkey 2 just out of pure curiosity. I, oh, okay, and we push start, we push start again. Let's see what we get. My feeling is that this is gonna be some kind of action adventure side-scrolling game, and it is. So we have jump, and we have jump, and we have throw whatever that is, presumably a boomerang. Oh my goodness. Okay, oh, you can throw midair, so not a problem. We'll jump on here, jump back up, throw the thing. I just got hit with the jump bean. Hit the bat. No double jumps in this game, by the way. And you can't jump on enemies, so that sucks. Uh, here we are. Snail, ruining my day. Can't duck either, but that doesn't seem to be a problem. We'll go down in this hole somehow. I don't know how we do that. I'm going to go to the next game. Let's try zooming, whichever that may be. Okay, so it looks like it's a spaceship game. Uh, so you have to dodge things. I don't know which button is to shoot. It doesn't look like I have one yet. I'm just getting hit by things. And I'm not joking when I say there is no button to shoot, at least not yet. All I'm doing is collecting blue orbs and dodging things, which doesn't seem fair. Let's just see what happens when you explode, or if you can. So, oh, there we go glorious flames. So contrary to the name, zooming was indeed a disappointment. Let's move on to the next page. And as you can see here, moving on to page number two, we have game 17 through 32. And that would include hearts, roulette, craps, motorboat, fateful battle, reversi, fruit, worm dream, distinction, hamburger, aviator, hero's mice, unwanted space, jig chick, Chinese checkers, and outrun. Now I will say that I have heard of outrun before, but something tells me that this will not be the one that I am thinking of. 
And for those who are not of age or familiar with casino games, hearts, roulettes, and craps are, you know, three casino type games. Motorboat is obviously gonna be a boat game, and Fateful Battle, who knows? So let's check that out. And Fateful Battle seems to be some kind of air dogfight game, which I'm pretty fond of, except this looks nothing at all like what I'm used to. It looks like Space Invaders plus uh, an aerial shooting game, and you know what? I'm already doing horrible at it. I died once, and I don't know if I can even clear one of these things, but let's see. Oh, look, I did it. I will say that the controls are good. I'm just really horrible at these. Again, the nerve problem in the left hand is not really helping the mobility of my plane. Let's see what Worm Dream is. And on the intro, we see something very horrifying. I don't even know what that is. It looks nothing like a worm. We have three lives, and we are this disgusting creature moving around. I actually don't know what can hurt me and what can't, but it looks like we're picking up these yellow pellets, trying to avoid these glowing things, which I just did not. I don't know if we need to get that. Nope, that also hurts you. These things seem to be moving in a pattern, so if I just keep moving this way, that's really, okay. So we probably have to let those things out. I don't have time to do this. It's pretty complicated. So worm dream being uh, the worst thing I can do for my wrist right now, uh, let's move on to something else and see what hamburger is. Now, on the startup screen, we have hamburger spelled out in colorful letters, and um, it just kind of started with the demo. And uh, looks like I will catch this eggplant, which sounded, you know, not so great. Uh, let's get the cheese, put that in the pie. Here's another eggplant. You have an eggplant and cheese and eggplant pie so far, but it looks to be some kind of apple. Let's throw that in the pie too, why not? Oh, it's a hamburger. That's how you make the hamburger. I was misunderstanding this. So for some reason, this game is called Hamburger, but they have what looks like an apple. That's a tomato, I guess. There's this chicken leg, an eggplant, and some cheese. Tell me that's not confusing. And just because I have to, let's go ahead and check out number 32, that being Outrun. And immediately I can see this is not the Outrun I was thinking of. So being that Outrun was the disappointment that it was, unfortunately. I'm gonna move on to page number three, which includes games 33 to 48. Those games would include Backgammon, Defire, Warrior, Prey, Puppet Show, Merry Christmas, Repair Urgently, Pattern Maker, Homing Chicken, UFO, Team Star, Monster Hunter, Swing, Mike Pig, Irrigate, and Spring Jester. Now, like half of those do not even sound like games, let alone titles for anything. Backgammon is a given, we know what that is, and if you don't, you've probably already heard of it. But when you get to things like, I don't know, Puppet Show, what is that? Merry Christmas, Repair Urgently, that is not a game title, that is not. These are so vague, you know, Homing Chicken, UFO is fine, I suppose, but then you have these other things down here like Mike Pig, I don't know what that means. And Irrigate, I thought I was reading that wrong, it really says that. So how about we start it off with a little bit of puppet show. And here we are with the puppet show. So it's my turn. I have no idea what's going on. It's kind of like a soccer penalty kick type thing. I guess this kind of determines where the kick or the ball is going and you have to get it past this guy. There's points that I don't understand, but let's see if we can do this. Yeah, there we go. Hit it again. Let's try one more time. I just hit him in the forehead, so I don't even know. I guess I got 300 points for hitting him in the face. As entertaining as Puppet Show was, I really want to see what Merry Christmas is. Being that next month will be the Christmas season, we get this horrifying picture of Santa with a potato nose, so let's push start. And here we are, tiny, horrifying little Santa, moving around at a snail's pace, literally. Don't know what I'm supposed to do. Don't know where I'm supposed to go. Here's a little kid. That's kind of creepy. Yeah. That doesn't look fun at all. Here we go. I am a car. I, oh, okay, I see. You need to put the correct road in before the car gets to the wreck. And, um, you know, I just tried to put it there. It won't let me put that there, so I don't know what it wants from me. Let's move on to homing chicken, shall we? And again, with the same kind of art style, who can blame them? Oh, man, it's another, like, maze puzzle type game where I don't even... Okay, so there's my character, I think. I have no idea what I'm supposed to be doing. Is this like a lemmings type situation? I guess so, and I'm not doing well. So Mike Pig is doing some kind of weird dance there, and we will push start just to get away from it. So uh, here we are picking up the cheese, and here is the last one, um, and you know, it just ends, and you go to the next one. That is 
Not what I thought this was gonna be. Moving on to an entirely new set of games, we have 49 through 64 here, including Tower, Road Mount, Symbol Puzzle, Puzzle Blocks, Knock It, Agile Mice, Bicycle, Tank 90, Speedman, Pong Pong, Deformable, Galliant, Balloon Labyrinth, Greedy, Alone, and Hitting Mice. Again, with the random titles, I'm not even gonna question them anymore. Just let me point out how crazy these are. Who knows what a road mound could be? That doesn't even sound great. That sounds terrible. Agile mice? Aren't mice just agile anyways? Pong pong? Like, dude, I don't understand why you can just call it ping pong unless it's not ping pong. So, you know, excuse me. Deformable. I mean, what kind of name is that? I'm... Anyways, let's see what Road Mound has to offer, and uh, again with these ugly graphics, oh boy. Uh, here is another building the road type situation thing, I have no idea. So as it turns out, Road Mound was in fact a steaming pile of Road Mound, and we will move on to something else. Maybe we will see what Knock It is about. <laughs> and look at this guy. So Knock It is like a uh, whack-a-mole situation where you're hitting these guys on the head with a maraca. And um, it doesn't seem to be too hard. However, it probably will speed up. One thing to note is that I'm actually using the controller, which seems weird because this seems like it should be a paddle game. So let me try this one time with the paddle and see if this actually hits. You know what? Did you see that? Look at the maraca. Look. It actually works. You just can't move. Uh, you know, the maraca around with the paddle, you're gonna have to use the little movement pad on here. So, if I move down here and hit him, there we go. Ah, you deserve it. I don't care if I'm minus 50. This is fun. This is not what I was thinking. It's two cars going head on to each other. Uh, looks like maybe I just have to avoid the cars. I just fell down a hole. I don't know how to turn. Oh, there we go. I just have to, it's a weird control. It's, it's not good, it's not fun. It's complicated. Don't play this. I just need to know what deformable is. Again, not what I thought it was. Looks like it's a picture of a motorcycle. Oh yeah, this is a motorcycle game and um, I don't know how to go. One of these buttons actually makes you go. Okay. So I wasn't expecting to run into that thing and actually have it blow me up. And here we are with game 65 through 80 and that would include Highway Racing, Edda City Snakes, Access Block, Swift Rider, Old Maid, Girl, Bubbles, Triple Jump, Long Jump, Javelin Throw, Shot Put, Shoot, Archery, Run 110 Meter Hurdles, Crystal, and Knock It. So first off, I have to say that like number 72 through number 78 could have probably been all in one game, like an Olympic pack, but they stretched it out and that's fine, I guess. I don't know what Eddie City Snakes would be. Maybe we should check that one out. And it looks like it may just be Snake. And at number 70, there is a game named Girl. I cannot imagine that it would be a boy. So here we are. Oh my goodness. And just to show off, you know, one of these athletic type things, let's go ahead and try, I don't know, shoot. And this looks like it's a uh, skeet shooting type thing. And oh my goodness, you're a panda with a rifle. I don't even know how to... <laughs> This is the greatest thing ever. I don't even care that I'm missing. Like, have you ever seen such a thing? Oh, I got that one though. So it looks like it kind of auto targets for you or something. I, hold on, I'm gonna swing this paddle around and see if that does anything. Does that do anything? Oh my goodness, it actually shoots. It, <laughs> so look at this, you're a panda with, I don't know, a shotgun or a rifle or something. And you're shooting clay pigeons and you can actually hit them with the ping pong paddle. Look at this, he's firing off right there. So it's insane. This is actually more fun than Duck Hunt just because of like what you're doing. And look at the, look at the little panda. So shoot was more than definitely worth it. Oh man, that was great. I would play that on my spare time. I don't even care. Knocking. And again, we have this really weird intro. Oh, okay. So it's like another whack-a-mole thing, except you're in the sky hitting a monster that comes out of clouds. And I guess you're supposed to avoid hitting the angels. I don't know if the paddle works necessarily. Okay, so this one's not as bad. So there's four uh, of these tubes and four directions on this pad. All you have to do is hit the corresponding direction and you actually hit them. So this is a simplified version of whack-a-mole, which actually would be good for smaller kids probably. Um, but let's see, does the paddle work? The paddle does not work for this game, instantly making it a little less cool. Moving right along to games 81 through 96, we have Toy Factory, Lunation, Hunter Alone, 
Man in Red, Falling, Ikarian, Thin Ice, Ghost Palace, Magic Pond, Shark, Earth Fighter, Fun Click, Dice, Bolt Action, Bonk, and Dringle. I think that'll be my new nickname. Oh, okay, I'm getting some Contra vibes here. Uh, okay, this kind of looks like Metal Slug, and I need to avoid that just in time. I don't know how to shoot at the boulders. I don't understand why it won't let me shoot down, though. I can just jump or get run over by a boulder, Indiana Jones style. Well, let me see, does the paddle do it? The paddle shoots, but I can't aim, and oh, just avoided it. So I don't necessarily understand how I'm supposed to destroy these things, because I, it doesn't look like I can, um, unless... I need to shoot, oh, there we go, I need to shoot these things. This is kind of like Metal Slug if you're familiar with it. The next set of games include Wild Worm, Escapeway, Dejectile, Hammer and Nail, Cookies Labyrinth, River Jump, Police vs. Thief, Brother Ball, Bug Catcher, Fruit Gift, Pizza Boy, Fling Ball, Mowing, Lightning, Pong Pong again, and Final Blood. First of all, I want to see what Dejectile is, and um... I don't even know if that's a word. Now that I'm looking at it, it's just a Bomberman clone, which I actually have no problems with because I love Bomberman. Games 129 to 144 include Aether Cruiser, Nutcracky, Greedy, Abscondi Once More, Pulveration, Vigilant, Submarine, Magic Egg, Sea Wolf, Ghost Castle, Contest, Seaport Guard, Pentabase, Roll Goblin, Frantic Mouse, and Undersea Arena. Because it won't go away, let's go ahead and see what Abscon D is about. That is terrifying. And uh, that's what a Rural Goblin is, if you were ever curious. It looks like another one of these whack-a-mole type games. And you know what? This one's actually geared towards auto-targeting wherever they pop up out of the hole. It's just your responsibility to hit them. I like this one a lot because it takes like no effort, so BAM! There's that one, there's that one, go away. I'm probably hitting this thing a lot harder than I need to, I'm just really getting into it because finally I have something, oh, a little flower, that resembles a game. In the next set we have Panzer Attack, Man in Red once again, Double Dum Doom, Arena, The Archer, Polar Bat, Lunarian again, Pobble, Burbles, Mad Christmas or Mad Xmas, Gate, Burrow Explorer, Goalkeeper, Depth Bomb, Pathway, and Cannonade. And might I just say, I'm, I'm pretty sure by now, they're just making up words. On the next page, we have Salver, Fruit again, Crystals, I'm pretty sure showed up once before, Numbers, Edition, Diamonds, Goblet Tower, Diamond, Snowball, Pillar, Antiquarium, Twin Fish, Twin Cards, Roadblock, Polar Cub, and Puzzle. To round out this entire thing, we have Memory Test, Last Man Standing, Scuba Hunt, Jet Defender, Ghost Collector, Hobbs Voyage, Eggs, Ikarian Once More, Shrew Mouse, Hexapod War, Apple Chess, Angel, Air Alert, Dark Castle, and Coast Guard as number 191. So for obvious reasons, I am not going to test out all of these. However, I'm thinking of making a video where I do a little bit of each game, just a few seconds, record it, show the label of what it is, and you can see all the things that are on there, if at all you are interested. However, I don't exactly have that kind of time as of right now. So I think you got the whole concept and idea of what this thing is. And again, I will have to say this. There is sound, but I didn't have it on. And, you know, this thing for $40, $39.99, uh, two controllers, one console, an HDMI cord, an HDMI converter box, one of these paddle things, and 191 games, which honestly, some were doubles, but uh, that was maybe about only 10 or so. Um, so you get about, you know, 180 games, and you don't have to have cartridges or anything like that. They're all loaded in there. I would say that it is somewhat worth it, and that just depends on how invested in these games you will be. Most of them are very, very simple in concept. Uh, you can't really spend more than 10 minutes playing each game. However, it can pacify some kids or even some adults such as myself. But is it worth $39.99? Well, I will say this. If it was $25, I would say that this would not be a bad value. I think at $39.99, I slightly overpaid for this, and you will too. I'm not saying that I don't endorse this product. Um, what I'm saying is that this thing costs $40, and you could probably find 
another thing that costs forty dollars that's worth you know a little bit more to you and your purposes or maybe a few things that are forty dollars that are a little bit more you know substance heavy however i'm not going to sit here and tell you that this thing isn't awesome with two controllers you can play you know tons of games they might not be the most in-depth or anything like that but you know what they're pretty awesome so in summary i think uh this thing is worth the money however if you don't really enjoy these type of simple games, you could spend $40 on something a little bit more substantial. And I do have some machines that are a little bit less uh, money that do have an equal amount of games, if not more, that I will show in the future. However, uh, $40, in my opinion, yeah, it does seem a bit steep. Again, at $25, it would be better, but it is what it is, and you can make the decision whether or not this is worth it for you or the people that you're buying it for. Again, I got this at Big Lots, which is a you know, store that has, I wouldn't say discounted items, but they do have discounted items in there. It's just, you know, a store that nothing is super expensive or super cheap. So thank you everybody for joining me today for the fall special. I know that the product had absolutely nothing to do with fall, but I just thought it was something cool to fill in the gap as I could not find any fall things that I thought were interesting. I also want to say that without all of you, uh, I would not be able to keep doing all of this. I've seen so much growth and so much support. It's, it's helped me out so much. And I want to go ahead and keep doing these types of videos and putting things out there for you that are entertaining as well as informational. Thank you so much. I really, really appreciate that. Please don't forget to like and subscribe. And I will see you in the next video.